Good evening and welcome to News Tonight on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us begin with the headlines. Supreme Court refuses to entertain petition to quash criminal case against Gujarat policemen involved in fake encounter killing of Ishrat Jahan. Lok Sabha passes Aadhaar bill, disregards opposition's demand to refer it to a standing committee. Government insists that focus is on using government money for targeted subsidy. Industrial output uh, falls for a third month in a row, contracting 1.5% in January amid slug sluggish demand and overcapacity. Opposition questions government as to how was Vijay Malia allowed to leave the country. Businessman claims uh, he is the subject of a media witch hunt. And Myanmar elects a long-time confidant of Aung San Suu Kyi as one of the three final candidates to be the next president. Voting expected to be conducted next week. For the day's biggest story, the Supreme Court today refused to entertain a petition seeking to quash the criminal case against the Gujarat policeman involved in the 2004 killing of Ishra Jahan. The petition was filed in the wake of the recent testimony of a jailed LET operative, David Coleman Headley. While the apex court bench said the PIL petitioner should have approached the High Court. However, it clarified that it was not dismissing the petition on merits when additional Solicitor General sought a clarification. While the petition refers to the statement of Pakistani-American terrorist Headley that was recorded before a Mumbai court recently, it reportedly confirms Ishra Jahan as a lashkar e toiba operative. Gujarat police personnel, including former IPS officer DG Banzara, are facing a trial in the Mumbai court for their alleged role in the encounter. The petition also sought a direction to close criminal proceedings and action taken against the Gujarat police personnel and others, saying it was unconstitutional within the judicial facts and evidences of Headley. And the Ishra Jaha issue surfaced in Lok Sabha as well, with the Congress alleging gross injustice for being disallowed when the calling attention on the matter was taken up on Thursday. The charge was stoutly denied by the government and the Speaker. The government said no Congress MP had given a notice to speak during the motion. On Friday, however, the Congress also denied all the allegations made against its former ministers and its government regarding the case. Home Minister Rajnath Singh, remember, had alleged on Thursday that there had been a flip-flop by the previous UP government with regard to the Ishra Jahan case. He had also said that the documents on Ishra Jahan were missing from his ministry and a conspiracy has been hashed to defame Modi. The matter was discussed under Rule 197 yes. by which a member can seek clarification from the minister yes. regarding particular issue. Mm -hmm. Contrary to it, the discussion was biased and the members were making baseless allegations against the erstwhile UPA government and its leaders. If you don't give a notice of the government and then you want to shape in the beach, then the government of the government and the government of the government can not be changed by the government of the government. And the Lok Sabha today passed the Aadhaar Bill 2016 as a money bill on Friday afternoon. The opposition alleged that the government was attempting to make the Rajya Sabha redundant through the process. The Aadhaar Bill seeks to give legal sanction to the unique identification number program or Aadhaar as a single window to distribute subsidy and other direct benefit transfers. The question is that the bill be passed. Those in favour may say aye. The Aadhaar Bill 2016 was passed in Lok Sabha on Friday. It was presented as a money bill prompting protests from the opposition. The bill seeks to give constitutional sanction to the Aadhaar number as a single window to distribute subsidy and other direct benefit transfers. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said provisions had been made in the bill to ensure that personal data was not misused. Honourable predecessor speakers have taken a view that machinery is incidentally created. The principal purpose is the spending of the money and the targeting of that money in a particular manner. So it doesn't lose its character as a money bill. 
The passage of the bill would save 20,000 crore rupees by avoiding subsidies taken by the undeserving. However, despite the government's assurance, the opposition raised concerns over misuse of users' biometric data. Several MPs also demanded that the bill be sent to a standing committee. Only this card is not for identification, but it is also for other things. So many personal information you have to give. So therefore, what harm is there if you refer it to the standing committee? I oppose the Aadhaar bill. I do not support the collection of such sensitive data from individuals of this nation. We are a multicultural, multilingual state. We have a plethora of cards that we can rely on. The government hopes this bill will help fight corruption. That's the reason it wants the bill to be passed quickly. Once a money bill is passed by Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha can only discuss it and not make any amendments. It also has to discuss the bill immediately. If not discussed within 14 days of being tabled in the upper house, a money bill is deemed passed. Pranav Goswami's report for Rajya Sabha TV. In more parliament news, the Nadi Enforcement Directorate has ordered a loans defaulter Vijay Malia to appear before it on 18th of March. The matter came up for discussion in parliament as well. The BJP and Congress-led opposition parties exchanged barbs in and outside parliament on the departure of liquor baron Vijay Malia. In parliament, the Congress asked how Malia was allowed to leave the country even after creditors of Kingfisher Airlines appealed to the Supreme Court to ensure he stayed in the country. The Congress also demanded a response from Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi and Finance Minister must answer to the nation. It must also be answered. Why was the lookout notice of CBI? First was which one was for detention of the person. Why was it toned down to only an information notice? Thirdly, when a specific information was received on 2nd of March, from immigration authorities to CBI that he was leaving the country. Why was no action taken? Malia is under pressure from banks to repay nearly 9,000 crore owed by his collapsed airline. In a series of tweets, he however refused claims that he fled India. All the public sector banks should order foreign thing audit to nail down how much money has been siphoned up by this corporate or the people who have taken loan so that the people's money can come back. Malia, who has called himself the king of good times, built his business around Kingfisher Beer and co-owns a Formula One racing team. He told his Twitter followers that he travels to and from India frequently and that he was the target of a media witch hunt. The Janata Dal United also demanded that the government intervene in the matter. Passport kyo nahi jabt kiya gaya? Interpol ki madad kyo nahi li gayi? Kyo nahi red look jari kiya gaya taaki saare hawaii addo par jaanch ho sake? Malia is a member of parliament's upper house. He was last seen in the chamber on March 1st. So far he hasn't disclosed his current location in social media posts. He's believed to have flown to London on a jet airways flight on March 2nd. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha Television. And the opposition members in Rajya Sabha raised the issue of a world cultural festival being held by the Art of Living in New Delhi. The opposition accused the centre taking an active part in the event, which the government insisted on calling a cultural event. The opposition in Rajya Sabha expressed concern over the defiant note struck by Art of Living founder Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. National Green no, that we have been here. This was over Ravi Shankar's response to the National Green Tribunal's decision to impose a 5 crore rupee penalty for holding a cultural extravaganza on the Yamuna flood plains. This is a complete ecological destruction of the Yamuna flood plain. That is, I request that the only Prime you. Minister you are to do his job. No, 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 he has to do his job. Yeah. He has to protect the environment. Is, he has to raise his voice. No, Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs, Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi, defended the spiritual guru, saying he is sensitive towards the environment. He also 
urged members not to give the episode a political color. Nakhvi said the Prime Minister will attend the event along with other BJP leaders. Shri Shri Ravi Shankar Ji is very concerned about the environment and he is always trying to protect the environment. He is always trying to protect the environment. He is always trying to protect the environment. He is not trying to say that he is not trying to protect the environment. Deputy Chairman P.J. Kurian said the matter was not listed in zero hour. He also said the issue was under the consideration of the court. Ravindra Shoran's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And the National Green Tribunal has taken a strong objection to Art of Living founder Sri Sri Ravi Shankar's remark on refusal to pay the fine for holding the cultural extravaganza on the Yamuna flood plains. Ravi Shankar had said on a Thursday that he would prefer going to jail rather than paying a 5 crore rupee fine. The tribunal, however, allowed AOL more time to pay the fine. The foundation had argued that it was a charitable organization and it was difficult for it to generate the huge amount in such a short period. The foundation is now paying a 25 lakh rupees immediately, failing which the grant of 2.5 crore rupees sanctioned to it by the centre will be attached. The foundation has now three weeks to pay the remaining 4.75 crore rupees. The cultural festival, meanwhile, is underway on the banks of River Yamuna. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other BJP leaders are attending the event. जो जमा करेंगे वो करेंगे साथ में साथ जितने भी सेफ्टी और सिक्योरिटी के हिसाब से हैं। जो जमा करेंगे वो करेंगे साथ में साथ जितने भी सेफ्टी और सिक्योरिटी के हिसाब से हैं दिल्ली पुलिस वगैरह के वो सब सर्टिफिकेट्स भी इन प्लेस होना पड़ेगा उसके ऊपर भी जो है अभी भी अगर नॉन कंप्लाइंस होगा किसी भी मोमेंट पर क्योंकि पहले पीडब्ल्यूडी ने सर्टिफाई किया था कि यहाँ पर स्ट्रक्चर अनसेफ है तो वो सेफ्टी वगैरह जो इशूज़ है अभी भी ओपन है अगर अथॉरिटीज़ को लगता है कि कोई भी सिक्योरिटी इशूज़ हैं तो वो एक्शन ले सकते हैं on to some other news now, where industrial output fell for the third consecutive month by contracting 1.5% in January, in an indication that the manufacturing sector continues to struggle with sluggish demand and overcapacity. The higher-than-expected decline was on account of uh, the sh sharp degrowth in capital goods, uh, whose output shrank 20.4%. Consumer goods output growth was flat as well. IIP from April to January stood at 2.75%, whereas December IIP was revised to negative 1.2%. Now, 10 out of the 22 industrial groups in the manufacturing sector recorded a negative growth in January 2016 as compared to the same month last year. Let's get you some more national news now in Nationwide. With the DM. DK declaring it won't align with any of the parties in the 2016 assembly polls. The party is now staring at isolation with the options of allies running out quickly. DMDK leader Vijay Kant announced that the party would go at it alone in the assembly elections in Tamil Nadu. A Delhi court today allowed a petition by BJP leader Subramaniam Swami and summoned documents in the National Herald case. Besides the documents for the year 2010-2011, the court also summoned Associated Journals private limited papers for the same assessment year. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today took an overview of the issues and schemes related to the education sector. According to sources, the meeting lasted nearly two and a half hours this evening. Officials of the Niti Ayo gave presentations related to the education sector from schools to higher education. News tonight will take a very short break. Up next, all the international news and sports news. Stay tuned. Thanks to the politicians like Nehru, who understood the importance of mathematics as an intellectual activity as well as for the economic development, they made important financial input into science. One of the quotations from Nehru, it's more or less what he said, I think to some extent, that mathematics is the vehicle of exact scientific thought. Watch Eureka with Professor M.S. Narasimhan, eminent mathematician, only on Rajya Sabha TV.
The Harappan period is also called the Bronze Age. Extensive collections from the era show the Indus artists were not only well versed in techniques of metallurgy but also innovations in dance and performing arts. Best seen in the famous Mohan Judaru relic, the Indus dancing girl. No impressive is the man drawing a bullock cart depicting agriculture activities. Bronze elephants on the other hand show domesticated animals used for transport. Art arisen from a multi-hued cultural canvas. <laughs> Tradition and cultural fervor dating back centuries. And encircling them all, there's a magic that awes. Embrace your nation's brilliant human warmth. Watch Colors of India, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. Moving on to some international news now. And a long-time confidant of Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi was today confirmed as one of the three final candidates to be Myanmar's next president. No landmark voting for the Myanmar presidency is expected next week. Here are all the details. Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi couldn't be named for the top job. But her long-time confidant has been confirmed for the final race. Hitin Kyao will be one of three candidates to be Myanmar's next president. He was approved with a strong 274 to 29 vote in the lower house of parliament. If elected, he would be the first leader of Myanmar in decades from outside the military. ตุยเซอเวียตเชตุนอตุเนปัตเตเดอะจองอาเฉลเดโรจนรูลีลาจียาราอุนาจนอเปียวตุเวยีตุยอีจินชีเดปุกุเตียวขึ้นบาเลย
Out of 22,000 names in the file, most seems to be duplicates. هاي معلومات استخباراتية أكيد الاستخباراتية اللي راح تشتغل عنا يعني بنصح إنه تتسلم لناس عم تشتغل ضد داعش الناس اللي فعلا مستنية شيء لتشتغل ضد داعش مو تتسلم لناس مشان تبيعها وتشتريها وترجع ترجعها على التنظيم. He knew it was very important. He didn't know what was on it, and he took it from the head of internal uh, security uh, of Islamic State. Came across the border and through the network that we've known for a very long time, um, we eventually were were, were given uh, the memory stick. Germany's Interior Ministry said the files appeared to be genuine. Germany, UK, and Syrian opposition media have identified IS recruits from at least 40 countries. The enrollment file contains names of IS supporters, their relatives telephone numbers and other details such as areas of expertise and who had recommended them. Another file marked martyrs detailed a group of IS members who were willing and trained to carry out suicide attacks. Two of those listed are currently on trial separately in Germany. Other two Germans on the list have appeared in IS videos earlier. 16 Britons, including two killed in airstrikes in Syria, also feature in the files. We've got 51 nationals from 51 countries that we've been able to identify, crosses the whole of the globe, from America all the way to China, a lot of European countries, Britain obviously, and then a lot from North Africa uh, and from the Middle East, Arabia. Many of them have been to every jihadist hotspot that you can think of in a single trip, starting in Tunisia, going to Libya, Somalia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, through to Europe. Belgium, France regularly and then to Turkey and into Syria. So they, were, they weren't on watch lists and they weren't stopped clearly because they were able to travel quite easily. Abu Hamid was a former free Syrian army fighter who switched to Islamic State. Apparently IS had been taken over by former soldiers of Iraqi Ba'ath Party of Saddam Hussein. Saddam was ousted in 2003 following the US-led invasion of Iraq. IS is known for its bureaucracy. Officials said a snapshot of the data looks like as it is from late 2013 or early 2014, but still it could have its uses. What appears to be a personal database for the group could be of real intelligence value for Western security services, if proven authentic. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. And some more international news now in the Global Buzz. UN experts said that the Islamic State terror group has significantly expanded the territory it controls in conflict on Libya. The experts monitoring Libya said that the terror group has successfully recruited marginalized communities in the center which it controls. The experts said in report to the UN Security Council that all parties in the conflict are continuing to receive illicit arm transfer, some with support from UN member countries. U.S. police has launched a manhunt after a brutal shooting at a backyard barbecue in Pennsylvania. The attack killed six people, including an eight-month pregnant woman. Police said that they are searching for at least two suspects and are asking witnesses to come forward about the massacre. The district attorney Stephen Zappala has st stated that the murders were planned and calculated. The gunman appeared to have targeted one or two of the victims, said Zappala. He also said that he hadn't ruled out drugs as the motive. The U.S. Senate today voted to defeat a bill seeking to block the $700 million sale of eight F-16 fighter jets to Pakistan. This decision comes uh, as some top lawmakers had to call Pakistan an unreliable ally and questioned its commitment in fighting terrorist organizations. Now, India has opposed the sale, saying that it disagrees with Washington's rationale that such arms transfers would help combat terrorism. On some cricket news now, and Pakistan's Interior Ministry has cleared the national men's and women's teams to travel to India for the World T20. The decision came after the government received letters from the West Bengal State Government and Kolkata's Police Commissioner Rajiv Kumar assuring a special security measures for the Pakistani team while in Kolkata. The men's team will play their match against India on 19th of March. A controversy had erupted over Pakistan playing in Dharamshala with the Congress government in the state asking the BCCI to address concerns of families of security personnel martyred in terror attacks in India. The issue resulted in the shifting of the India-Pakistan match from Dharamshala to Kolkata.
Let's get you some more sporting action now in Sports Beat. Asian shuttler Saina Nehwal will take on Tai Zhu Ying of the Chinese Taipei in the All England Championship quarterfinal today. The world number two scripted a 21-16, 21-9 victory in the second round late on Thursday to be the only Indian remaining in the tournament. The other Indian shuttlers proved to be a disappointment with all of them losing to their respective opponents. Hundreds of people, including cricketing greats, attended the funeral service for former New Zealand cricket captain Martin Crow in Auckland. About 1,000 mourners packed Auckland's Holy Trinity Cathedral to remember Crow, who died on 4th of March, aged 53, after a long battle with cancer. Liverpool tightened their grip on the Europa Cup last 16 tie after a 2-0 victory over Manchester United in the first leg. Daniel Sturridge gave Liverpool a 20th minute lead from the spot after Memphis Depe fouled Nathan D.L. Klein and Roberto Firmino then added a second from close range with 17 minutes left. That's all in this edition of news, but news and updates continue on your channel. Thanks for your time.